Namaste dear children, I am Rega. Welcome to my channel Rega's Knowledge Hub. Today we will see NCRT Classic Science Chapter 5 Measurement of Length and Motion Multiple Choice Questions and Short Answer Questions. Hi children, how are you all? Children, please like, share and subscribe this channel. Also, when you like this channel, don't forget to Hide this video. Now we will see the questions. First one, why is the number of hand spans used to measure the table different for each child? If we are using hand spans to measure the table, then the number of hand spans used to measure will be different for each child. What is the reason? We will see the options. Because the table's length changes, because their hand spans are different sizes, because they counted incorrectly, because the number of children is different. Which is the correct answer? Because their hand spans are different sizes. Next one, what is the main problem with using a hand span as a unit of Measurement. Options are, it is too difficult to count. It can only be used for small objects. The measurement will be different for different people. It is not a traditional unit. What is the main problem with using a hand span as a unit of measurement? The measurement will be different for different people. What is the standard unit of length in the International System of Units or SI units? Options are kilometer, centimeter, meter, millimeter. In SI units, what is the standard unit of length? It is meter. The next one, how many equal divisions is 1 meter divided into with each division called a centimeter. That is, 1 meter is equal to how many centimeters? Options are 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. Which is the correct answer? 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. How many millimeters are equal to 1 centimeter? Options are 1, 10, 100, 1000. How many millimeters are equal to 1 centimeter? 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. Next one, what is the correct way to place a scale to measure an object's length? Suppose you want to measure the length of an object. What is the correct way to place a scale? Options are, the scale should be placed at a distance from the object. The scale should be placed in contact with the object along its length. The scale should be placed perpendicular to the object. Which is the correct answer? Which is the correct way to place a scale to measure an object's length? The scale should be placed in contact with the object along its length. Next one, if the end of a scale is broken, how can you still measure an object's length accurately? Suppose your scale is broken at the end. Then, how do you measure the object's length accurately? See the options. You cannot measure the length at all. You should start the measurement from a zero mark drawn on the object. You can use any other full mark on the scale as the starting point and subtract its reading from the final reading. You should estimate the length by I, which is the correct answer. If the end of the scale is broken, then you cannot see the zero mark. Then what you should do? You can use any other full mark on the scale as the starting point and subtract its reading from the Final reading. Children, I have already explained this in the explanation videos. 
those who have not watched please go through it what is the correct position of the eye when reading a measurement on a scale your eye should be directly above the tip of the pencil your eye should be at an angle to the scale to get a clearer view your eye can be at any position as it doesn't affect the reading your eye should be at the opposite end of the scale which is the correct answer when you are reading a measurement on the scale what is the correct position of the eye your eye should be directly above the tip of the pencil then only you will get accurate measurement the next one what do kilometer stones on the road side show distance from the nearest school distance from a reference point for example like delhi distance from the bus stand distance from home which is the correct answer distance from a reference point when is an object considered to be in motion options are when it is at rest when its position changes with respect to a reference point with the time when it is not changing its position with respect to the reference point when the time remains constant so when an object is considered to be in motion when its position changes with respect to a reference point with the time next one what is the motion of an eraser when it is dropped from a certain height options are circular motion oscillatory motion linear motion periodic motion which is the correct answer motion of an eraser when it is dropped from a certain height what type of motion it is linear motion the march past of students during republic day parade is an example of which type of motion options are oscillatory motion circular motion linear motion periodic motion which is the correct answer linear motion next one motion of a swing is linear motion circular motion oscillatory motion random motion motion of a swing is an oscillatory motion which of these shows circular motion a child sliding down a straight slide the earth revolving around the sun a book falling from a table a person running on a straight road which is the correct answer the earth revolving around the sun this is an example of circular motion why do people use scales and measuring tapes instead of hand spans or foot lengths instead of hand spans or foot lengths why we are using scales and measuring tapes people use scales and measuring tapes because these provide a standardized unit of measurement this ensures that the measurement of a length made by different people will be the same and not differ from person to person can we measure a table using hand spans or foot length yes we can but if two different people measure with their hands will they always get the same number no why one person may have small hands another may have big hands so the number of hand spans will be different so what is the problem here the measurement is not the same for everyone then how can we solve this problem we can use tools like measuring tapes or scales they have fixed standard units like centimeters meters inches etc everyone gets the same measurement no matter who uses them they are more accurate and reliable what is the international system of units and what is its symbol the international system of units or si units 
is a system of standard units of measurement adopted by different countries to ensure consistent measurements. Its symbol is SI. So, SI units are standard units used all over the world. This makes measurements clear, uniform and easy to compare. For example, SI unit of length is meter. SI units are the international standard units of measurement used all over the world so that everyone speaks the same language of measurement. If you are measuring a pencil and the reading at one end of a broken scale is 2.0 cm and at the other end is 10.5 cm, what is the actual length of the pencil? Suppose you want to measure the length of a pencil. Your scale is broken. The reading at one end of the broken scale is 2 cm and the other end it is 10.5 cm. Then what is the actual length of the pencil? The actual length is the difference between the two readings. So 10.5 cm minus 2 cm that is 8.5 cm. This is the actual length of the pencil. What is the specific way that visually challenged students measure lengths? How visually challenged students will measure length? Visually challenged students use scales with raised markings that they can feel by touching to measure length. What about students who are visually challenged? Can they see those marks? No, they cannot see the marks clearly. So, how can they measure length? They use special scales made for them. The numbers and markings are not printed but made in raised dots or lines. These can be felt by touch with the fingers. Next one, how would you measure the length of a curved line? To measure a curved line, we can use a flexible measuring tape or a thread. You can use a flexible measuring tape or a thread. The thread can be carefully placed along the curve and then straightened to measure its length with a meter scale. Can we use a normal ruler to measure a curved line? No. A ruler is straight so it cannot follow the bends of a curved line. Then how can we find the length of a curved line? We can use a thread or a measuring tape. Place the thread carefully along the curved line. Then straighten the thread and measure it with a ruler. When an object is said to be at rest, if an object is not changing its position with respect to the reference point with the time, it is said to be at rest. So, what do we mean by rest in daily life when something is not moving? We say it is at rest. Example, a book lying on a table. But how do we know if something is moving or not? We compare it with something else that is fixed called a reference point. If you are sitting in a chair, you are at rest with respect to the chair and the room. So, if an object is not changing its position with respect to the reference point with the time, it is said to be at rest. Next one, define linear motion and provide an example. Linear motion is a movement of an object along a Straight line, example pushing a heavy box, a car moving on a straight road, etc. Movement of an object along a straight line it is called linear motion. What is circular motion? Give one example. Motion along a circular path is called circular motion. Example, a merry-go-round. Next one, what is oscillatory motion? Give an example. To and fro motion about a fixed point is called the oscillatory motion. Example, a swing. What do we call motion? 
that goes back and forth again and again. That kind of motion is called oscillatory motion. Can you give some examples? A swing moving back and forth, a pendulum of a cloak, etc. Examples for motion that are periodic in nature. Periodic means what? Something that happens again and again at regular intervals of time. So, periodic motion is a motion that repeats itself after a fixed interval of time. So, examples are circular motion, oscillatory motion, etc. The motion of earth around the sun, then the rotation of the earth on its axis, then the swing of a pendulum, the motion of a cloak's hands. These are periodic in nature. Next one, does our heart move? What type of motion is this? Children, if you know the answer, please write in the comment box. I will give you beautiful stars. Children, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hide this video. Thank you. We will see in the next video.